Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about elongation of translation in eukaryotes. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So in our last lecture, we have talked about the initiation of eukaryotic translation. If you missed that lecture, I would highly recommend you to go through that lecture first to understand today's lecture in a better way. Let's talk about the elongation of eukaryotic translation. This is our ribosome. This is our mRNA. And the ribosome has three sides or three pockets. A, P and E. After the initiation of translation, the start codon of mRNA that is AUG is now placed in the P site of ribosome and it is bound to tRNA. This is initiator tRNA also called MIT tRNA since it carries the amino acid methionine and the interaction is caused via codon anticodon base pairing. Here the codon is AUG in the mRNA and the anticodon in the tRNA is UAC. Okay. Now the next codon in the mRNA is GUG that is placed in the A site. Let's talk about steps of elongation. So there are mainly three steps. Amino acyl tRNA binding, peptide bond formation and translocation. First is amino acyl tRNA binding. So this is the second tRNA which is amino acyl tRNA. The first tRNA was initiator tRNA which was placed in the P site. Now it is amino acyl tRNA. Okay. The amino acyl tRNA for the second codon of mRNA binds to the A site via codon anticodon interaction. So here the second codon is GUG and of course the anticodon in the tRNA should be CAC and this tRNA carries the amino acid valine. Since the codon is GUG the amino acid must be valine. Okay, so this amino acyl tRNA along with the valine will sit here in the A site. Now binding of the amino acyl tRNA requires elongation factor E, EF1 and GTP. So this is basically elongation factor EF and small e is specific for eukaryotes. So here E, EF1 along with GTP help this amino acyl tRNA to fit here. Now following binding the GTP is hydrolyzed and the EEF1 is released now bound to GTP. Once amino acyl tRNA fits here this EEF1 GTP doesn't have any role. So the hydrolysis of GTP takes place. GTP becomes GDP and EEF1 and GDP gets released. Next step is peptide bond formation. This step is catalyzed by peptidyl transferase enzyme. In this step, the carboxyl end of the amino acid bound to the tRNA in the P site is uncoupled from the tRNA and becomes joined by a peptide bond to the amino group by the amino acid linked to the tRNA in the A site. I am explaining this here. So basically the peptide bond is now formed between two amino acids, methionine and valine. So here a peptide bond is formed and we all know that the peptide bond is formed between the amino group of one amino acid and the carboxyl group of another amino acid. So this is the thing happening here. Peptide bond is formed between these two amino acids and 
the dipeptide that means the valine and methionine these two are attached with the amino acyl trna in the a site so this trna which was initiated trna is now uncharged it doesn't have any amino acid with it so it is empty in this p site and an enzyme peptidyl transferase helps in this peptide bond formation next step is translocation so an elongation factor eef to gtp it is also called translocase so this eef2 and gtp they bind to the ribosome here three events will occur and these three events will be collectively called as translocation first event the uncoupled trna that means this trna this is the initiated trna without amino acid it moves from this p site to the e site so this is now here next the dipeptidyl trna in the a site so this one which has dipeptide so this trna in the a site moves to the p site right it is now here this is the second thing third thing that will happen the ribosome moves along the mrna by three nucleotides to place the next codon in the a site so the next codon you can see here the next codon was uuu and the ribosome moves three nucleotides hence this uuu is now in the a site this gug which was in the a site is now in the p site and aug which was in the p site is now in the e site okay during the translocation events gtp is hydrolyzed to gdp and eef2 is released so the work of eef2 is completed it's finished after that the gtp gets hydrolyzed to gdp and the gdp along with eef2 gets released from the complex okay now after translocation the a site is empty and ready to receive the next amino acid trna so here this a site is now empty and it is ready to receive the next amino acid trna so here the codon is this is third codon this is now uuu so based on that the amino acyl trna should have the anti codon that is aaa and based on the codon uuu the amino acyl trna should carry the amino acid lysine so this is what happens here this amino acyl trna will now sit here okay trna in the e site is released from the ribosome so this trna it is actually initiated trna it is now released from the e site once it is released the same thing will be continued like the peptide bond will be formed between this valine and lysine again the tripeptide will be transferred here in the amino acyl trna this brown trna is now uncharged then translocation will occur and the same thing will continue so the elongation continues in this way this is all about today's lecture i hope you liked the lecture thank you for watching my video